I hear a sp spirit really loud. Where are you going? Of course! The thing that annoys me about people who claim to have a sect created by a prophet, you know, you end up with some kind of new prophet, hey, I've been contacted by God and I've got a message. You end up with that, a charismatic leader. And they create an organization and many years later, they seem just to be a normal sect. Cult leader has died, in effect. And it's like, oh, what do we do? We spread love, the Christian message, blah, blah, blah. That's fairly standard. But who was the founder? Oh, that cult leader, David Berg. The organization, the Family International, was founded in 1968 by David Berg, who created a sex cult and his own personal Bible and a lot of propaganda, basically manipulating people into sex to draw them into the organization. Initially with his wife, and then later with various other females who joined the cult who would draw people in. But it gets far worse when you consider the fact that David Berg was abusing children. Not merely beating them, not merely verbally and physically abusing them, but sexually living out his narcissistic fantasies, as is referenced in the documentary about egomania. Of all the cult leaders, it would be hard to find a bigger egomaniac than David Berg. His cult, The Children of God, which he founded in 1968, ended up mirroring his own worst narcissistic characteristics. Some examples of David Berg's um, narcissistic personality disorder. Uh, he certainly had grandiose feelings. I mean, he felt that he was called by God as God's end time prophet. Uh, he was predicting the end of the world numerous times. He was certainly obsessed with fantasies of unlimited success and fame. For those born into Berg's cult, they had no choice but to follow his idealism. David Berg often said that he, he was the only one with the wisdom. He was the only one who could interpret biblical prophecy. He was the last prophet of the end. Berg created his own Bible in order to spread the idea of promiscuity. He was involved in all kind of sexual deviancy. Prostitution, he sold it as flirty fishing. He was the fisher, the women were the bait with the hook, and uh, these lonely men, lots of money, were the fish. Berg's idealism began to catch on. As the membership grew, shockingly, Berg removed the age limit for sexual partners. And he was basically doing all of this, then he died, got away with it completely, and the cult, the organization, the Family International was forced to reinvent itself. What are they? They're a Christian sect, at best. Can they ignore their past? Well, they do. If you speak to them and any of their members, they ignore their past, or they try and dance around it. But the fact is, if your organisation was started by a supposed prophet of God, doing things for their own personal pleasures, as well as you know, covering up the actions of others who did very similar things. I don't call that, well, in any way, the actions of a sound moral character, let alone a prophet of God. So, how do you justify that? And when you separate yourself from, oh yeah, that guy is a real evil bastard, then what's your basis for the existence of your organisation? You know, your basis was, it was founded by a prophet of God and you were known as the children of God. It seems like the foundation of the organization has been fundamentally undermined, and the kind of reboot or recreation, reforging of the organization, has been as much to break away from David Berg and that history. You've got an organization, do you throw it away completely, even though you still believe? No, but you decide to move it away as far as plausible, or as far as possible, from the pedophile cult leader. So that's pretty much what you've done. And it makes some kind of sense, but as long as the organisation is still effectively the same organisation, even after many years of uh, reform, you still end up holding on to that stigma. I think Robert almost comes, along, comes with a deep psychosis.